another good, brilliant story. This made my Twitter feed go into absolute meltdown. Um, I uh, last time I looked, the statistics on it was over a hundred thousand um, kind of impressions and views, and like, uh, tens of thousands, or thousands of likes and what have you. It was crazy. Um, this wasn't publicized. <laughs> Nobody really gets why not. So the Indian Space Agency, ISRO, um, 2019, they attempted to land on the surface of the moon with the Vikram lander. That crashed. That's been imaged by uh, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. But they were able to keep an orbiter uh, going around the moon, Chandrayaan-2. So fabulous, fabulous little orbiter with a very detailed high resolution camera. Now, Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, you know, going back to 2009, obviously the technology is not going to be as advanced as something 10 years later. Plus the orbits on LRO tend to be a little bit higher, a little bit more inclined orbits. Um, Chandrayaan-2 seems to be able to go to a slightly lower orbital inclination, lower, lower orbit relative to the moon uh, than the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. And they just snuck these out. They didn't really tell anyone. ISRO just went, oh, yeah, here's some images. So if you had access to the Indian Space Agency's data store and database, and you had to create an account and log into, etc., you could get access to these raw images, and they are absolutely staggering. Um, the level of detail, they are looking at 10 to 18 centimeter per pixel resolution from orbit. What they've done is flyovers of both the Apollo 11 and the Apollo 12 landing sites. Now they've got others in, in target and in mind, and I've seen some of their initial data on Apollo 14, for example, which nowhere near the clarity that we're seeing here with these two. If you've not seen the images yet in their absolute entirety and glory, please see them, especially the Apollo 12 ones. So the Apollo 11 ones, I mean, the images are, this is Apollo 12 that you can see in the image there, but the Apollo 11 one where you've got West Crater um, and, you know, all of the, if you've watched the movie First Man where Neil Armstrong walks to the edge of West Crater, you can see the footsteps. You can also see the fallen over flag. There's a kind of inference of a dust covered fallen over flag in the Apollo 11 image. You can see the camera. You can see the outset. You can make out the individual legs of the lander. You can see the high gain antenna. I mean, the shadows being cast by the cameras, etc., of all over this these images, the footprints on the surface of the moon where the astronauts walked, they're all there. Going on to Apollo 12, you've not only got Apollo 12, obviously, in the images, but you've got the surveyor mission, which Apollo 12 landed only a few hundred yards away from. And, you know, Pete Conrad and and being walked over to and you know they had issues obviously with their color camera and what have you but uh, with the Apollo 12 ones, you can still see the flag because with Apollo 11, Buzz has always said, you know, when they took off, the flag got blown over. And yes, the images from Apollo 11, it looks like from the location where they planted the flag near to one of the cameras, you can see something that's kind of partially covered in dust. Um, but these are absolutely remarkable. And what I love about them is that the Bart Siebel's of this world. Now, if you don't know who Bart Siebel is, he's the idiot who basically went up to Buzz Aldrin and said, you've got to swear on the Bible that you landed on the moon because you're a liar and you didn't and it's all fate. And then Buzz, I think he was aged in his mid 70s at that point, basically punched him uh, and, and knocked him flat out. I mean, these moon conspiracy theorists are just a joke. They really are. And there's millions of them all over the world. Um, it's really funny seeing the social media reaction to this where people have said, well, you know, how are you going to how are you going to deny this? Oh, it's Photoshop. Well, you can't do that. In Why? What would India gain from doing this in Photoshop? There's nothing to be gained here. It's it's just a ridiculous premise. And the fact that all of the images show so much detail. And we were saying just before we came on air, on air, you know, it really gives you an incredible appreciation of just how complex it was using 1969 technology, very basic computers, you know, slower than, you know, some of the audience may remember the ZX81, which was my first computer back in 1981 and the ZX80 just before that. I mean, these computers were on the par with that. And they managed to land on the moon six times. And then the manual override control that Neil Armstrong did when he landed Apollo 11, and you look at the, the field near Apollo 11, it's just craters everywhere and rocks everywhere. And Apollo 12, the same. It's just an absolute minefield of how, how do you land on that? And then, like I said, look at Apollo 14. That just takes it to a whole other level. And then 15, even more complex. And 17, when we start to see the 17 images, um, you know, it, it's just going to be off the scale. Um, I, I just, it beggars belief. Uh, I absolutely love this. 
bit of a special place in my heart because I was born the day that um, Bean and Conrad were uh, picking up rocks on the moon in 1969 in November. Um, so I've always had a soft spot for that. I've, I've been able to very luckily hold some of those rocks um, when they were being analysed by uh, one of the British universities. They'd gone under laser ablation, so um, it was safe to kind of hold them. But it's it's stunning. It really is. And having met Alan Bean and Dick Gordon as well at various conferences and sat on panels with them. Um, it, it's wonderful that that legacy, you know, especially for their kids, you know, Sue Bean and Amy and, you know, the, the family that is still alive, you know, Alan's you know, wife and his children, etc., and Neil's sons. Um, it must be amazing for them to see this stuff at that level of detail. I don't know what your thoughts are, Terry, but. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I agree with you totally. Just uh, one sort of minor point for anybody that is relatively new to this. It shows the importance of a low sun angle to give you the shadows. If you look at the full moon through even a very powerful telescope, it is quite hard to make out any detail on it because the sun is shining down directly from overhead on the surface. The best time to look at the moon is when the sun is shining at an angle and then you get the effect of the shadows and that shows up perfectly there. Uh, if you were just looking at the white parts in the sort of the center of that image, relatively hard to make out what it is. Is it just extra white rocks or something or other? But once you see the shadows there, you can see the actual shape of of the spacecraft there as thrown by the shadow and that's why it's it's basically not photoshopped that is genuine imagery of a human artifact on the moon and it's just mind-blowing as you say yeah it's it's the footsteps i mean you just think that 50 you know 50 plus years ago now people walking around on the surface of of the moon i don't know it, it just it always has it's been to me it's always been the greatest technical achievement in human history and until we land on mars i think that will uh, that will be the case um but yeah more please um israel keep going with shandrian to keep delivering these amazing images and uh we just hope to see more and more of them apollo 15 is going to be a good one as well because hadley Mill, obviously it's one of those locations that's quite easy to see even with amateur telescopes from from the earth um and it's one of those things that you love showing kids in particular when you're out observing the moon and you know the right time of of the lunar cycle and saying you see that kind of thing that looks a little bit like a river there well apollo 15 is just there kind of thing it's really it is wonderful 